Hello everyone, Colin Canette here for Woodwork Web. Today we've got another lantern project that we're going to be making. This time it's a colonial style lantern and we've got some gorgeous uh, brass fittings that we're going to be putting on it. So stick around to see what we do to make this great little colonial style lantern. So to get started, I've already prepared the wood for the base. Uh, which means I planed it to 7 eighths of an inch and I've jointed a couple of edges here and what I want to do right now is we're just going to glue it together uh, and while this glue is drying we'll be able to go on and do some other work. So. I found a nice straight grain piece of wood that we can use for the uprights. I just need to joint one edge. Okay, I've set the height of my blade so that it's about half a tooth above the material. I've set the fence. I'm also using my blue line rip blade which will give me an ultra sharp finish on it. I won't even have to joint after I'm finished. I took a moment to set up a stop block. Now I'm going to cut the cross members in blocks of four. Okay, I've cut all of the sides of the lantern. The reason I've got the blue tape on here is so I can see the face side of all of these because I'm going to use my little um, doweling jig. So there's the face side with the blue and I put it in like that with this face side down and I, I have the blue marked on my doweling jig as well and if you notice you'll see that I've marked an X where the dowels need to go. So as long as this is always matching the blue, I'm going to get all of my dowels lining up properly. Now the face side is on that side. There, and I'll just go on and I'll do all the rest of them and then I'll do the connecting pieces. Now I'm doing the connecting pieces and it's the same thing, blue to the blue, and I'm going to do one side on this side of the jig. Then flip it over. And now use the other side again, blue to blue, and line that up. And that will give me And you'll see when we put that together how well that lines up. While these frames are hardening up here, I experimented with some little bit smaller pieces because we need to make the sort of a window effect in the middle here. And I wanted to use something smaller than this um, larger material because I want to have a little bit of a reveal inside so there's a little bit of a, uh, a dip in this. 
I've already set the height of the blade, now I need to make sure that I keep within those marks. Now I've done some sanding and the next part we need to do is put this together and that's going to look like that and remember I said we were going to use quarter inch dowels for that. So what I need to do now is to put the quarter inch um, guides in my tool. Because I'm only going to be using the two outside I'm only going to replace those Now because I, this won't fit on here like this because of the way it's set up, I also need to quickly change the configuration of the jig because I need to drill holes like that. And the way we do that is to simply attach this part. There it is, all set up. All I need to do is drill the holes. Okay, there's the dry fit. Uh, it takes uh, five hands to put it together, so all I need to do now is take it back apart and I'll just glue that up. I'm just mixing up some five minute epoxy now. Uh, we've finished the frame, we're all together as you can see, and now I'm just going to glue with a little bit of epoxy. We should just slide right into place. I won't even have to tack it. It's a pretty nice friction fit and it'll be dry. Well we need to stop and make the door now and what I'm going to show you a different methodology that we could have used to make the whole frame and for that I'm just using a little bit of epoxy on the end grain and we like to use if we're going to glue end grain we really need to use something like an epoxy type glue uh, something that doesn't soak into the grain quite as much and all I'm going to do with this is pin it and I'm not so worried about strength here because it's just a little door and there really isn't going to be any reason for it to be terribly strong and now I'm just going to pin it with my 23 gauge pinner and I'm using my frame here so that it's absolutely square so we have the uh, sort of the main body of the lantern all done. Remember we started off we glued the base, what will be the top and the base and I've just taken that out, it's nice and dry now. What I'm going to do is just take it over to the table saw I'm not going to show you this because you've seen the table saw I used lots of times. I'm just going to trim it, trim it to size, uh, trim the two edges off and basically cut it in half and then we're going to take it over to the uh, router and I think we'll put a little bit of a decorative uh, decorative uh, edge on it. So uh, when I come back we'll be over at the router. I've already isolated the bearing so that it's all straight across there. I've set the height. We're ready to start doing our cut. When we're cutting around a block like this we always cut the edge grain first because there will be tear out but when we rotate we'll do the long grain last and it will take away that tear out.
We've got all of our components now. All I need to do is put them together and it's a very simple process. Of course the bottom goes like that, the top goes on there like that. And I'm going to fasten these by drilling a, some screws, four screws up from there inside. So I'll countersink them and put them in from there. On the bottom I'm going to be drilling from underneath up into this so that you won't see any screws. And then of course that we have the door to put on and I've got some hinges here for that and we even have a, a handle for the top and I've manufactured a couple of brass um, clasps to hold that on so I'm going to go ahead and start putting that together and we'll show you some of that and we'll uh, speed it up Well, this concludes our little uh, colonial style lantern project. And you can see it's a great little project. There's lots of parts to this. It's going to take you a while to do. Don't be uh, misled by the fact that it's small. There's a lot of parts and it does take a while to fit everything and put everything together. Uh, but when, when it's done, it looks just great. And I think it really does look better when it's painted white. Uh, and when you have the little brass, all the brass hardware on there, it really stands out. I'll be honest, I haven't found the right light for this yet. I've been looking, I've found these kind of LEDs, uh, not really happy with those. I've got this kind of a, an LED that I thought might, I could use at the bottom and point down. I don't really like it. It's really looking for like a single bulb in here. Uh, but what you don't want to do is put uh, a candle. You never want to put candles in here because first of all it's made out of wood so it is going to catch fire so don't put candles in here of any kind. I hate candles. They've started so many fires and caused so much damage. Uh, so maybe one of you will come up with an idea on light and maybe you can post something uh, that you could share with us uh, so we all have an idea on what we could do for a light for this. I'm Colin Canette for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. And stay tuned because there's lots more projects. And don't forget, the details of this will be in an article on Woodwork Web. And the link for that is right under, uh, first line in the description box, right under this video.